Is it you the first? Steve. Okay, premier, uh, we have a first uh, presenter here is uh, Dr. Stephen Blair, who is uh, from South Carolina. No, Stephen Blair. Not the AAC's fault, it's the uh, organization fault. And I ask then, uh, uh, to, I mean, Professor, I mean, Lee to come. I'm so glad to be part of the group this year. I don't normally join the Ajita Mundo Network meeting, so it's a tremendous pleasure for me to be here today. I'd like to thank Dr. Victor Matsudo for inviting me here. And he asked me to make a few remarks. I don't primarily work in the field of physical activity promotion, so I don't want to talk about something that I have little knowledge about. Instead, I'll talk about something a little downstream, which I have some experience with, and that's physical activity measurement. So the context of this is, as you all know, physical activity is very important for good health. But unfortunately, few people in the world are physically active. And all of you here do work in physical activity promotion. So programs such as Ajita Mundo are extremely important. What I would like to talk a little bit about is, yes, it's great that you do this work in physical activity promotion, but how well is it working? What do you have to do? And the speakers before me have talked about important things such as counting the number of participants, looking at the number of programs that you have. But ultimately, what is important is the level of physical activity in the population. What has changed as a consequence of what you are doing? So this slide has been shown earlier by Oscar Diaz, and it's a slide from the Lancet physical activity series. So we know, for example, in 2008 that we had data from 122 countries throughout the world looking at the levels of physical activity. And this, I'm sure, gave a lot of governments pause to look to see that the minority of your, their population actually gets a level of physical activity that is sufficient to meet physical activity recommendations. So probably lots of programs have been implemented after that, or at least hopefully programs have been implemented after that. Has anything changed? Now in many high income countries, we have systems of systematic surveillance that tell us what is happening to the physical activity levels of the population. But in middle and low income countries, there is relatively little of that going on. Brazil is a good example. For example, this is a paper that Dr. Victor Matsudo and colleagues did looking at time trends in physical activity in the state of Sao Paulo between 2002 and 2008. And as you can see, oh, I can't get the pointer, but as you can see, the level of people with no minutes in physical activity has perhaps gone down a little bit or has been stable but the proportion of people who do not get physical activity sufficient to meet recommendations has gone down drastically over time this is the state of sao paulo what about the rest of brazil you all know that you have a program known as the vigital survey which is a telephone survey that dials about 2000 people in each state capital in brazil and i've been very fortunate to work with a group looking at time trends in physical activity and inactivity so vigital asks about leisure time physical activity transport physical activity and also time that you spent watching tv so let's look at the continuous gray line which is leisure time physical activity and you can see that Sorry. Ah, thank you. So you can see that with leisure time physical activity, it has gone up a little bit over time. With transport physical activity, unfortunately, this may have gone down a little bit, but you'll see that there's a break here, and I'll talk a bit about it later. Um, time spent watching t TV has um, gone down perhaps 
in this period of time, you see this break and then it's been stable over time. Now, why is there a break? There's a break because the questions in Vigital changed over time. If you change the questions over time, it may be hard to make good comparisons. And the, importance, uh, the point of my talk is the importance of the same kinds of measures for physical activity. So if you want to monitor, it's important to use the same kind of measures. And with Victor's paper, he used IPEC, so you could look at it continuously. The measures may not be perfect. Of course, there may always be better measures. But the important thing is if you use the same measures, it can give you some idea of what's happening over time. I'm going to give you an example from the US, a bad example. What can go wrong if you don't use the same measures? So this is a paper that is going to be published and is in a journal called the American Journal of Medicine, which is a very good journal. And the group was actually from Stanford University, which is a very good university. And they concluded that between 1998 and 2012, the prevalence of adult women who do no leisure time physical activity increased from 19% to 52%, two and a half times. And the proportion of men doing no leisure time physical activity increased from 11% to 44%. So this is like Ebola virus uh, territory. This is very serious. If it was so serious, we have to throw a lot of money into that. But unfortunately, I don't think this was the case because the questions had changed over time. So in NHANES 3, which was 1988, what the questions did was they asked people whether they walked a mile or more without stopping. And then they moved on to the next question and asked them, during the past month, did you engage in eight different kinds of activities? And this was jogging, biking, swimming, aerobics, dancing, calisthenics, gardening or yard work, and weight training. And if you didn't do this, they'll say, do you do anything else? And two other activities were coded. So anyone who said yes to any of those in 1988 was recorded. So obviously, you would have a high level. Now, in 2009 to 2010, NHANES used the IPEC. And in the IPEC, we asked about the time, uh, whether you do any activities as work, whether paid or unpaid. So someone who does gardening or housework will respond to this. Then we asked about transportation, whether you work for transportation. And the last part of IPEC says, do not consider those questions. Now, is there anything else that you do? And in the paper that I showed you, what they counted was only the last category. So of course, the proportion went down. So it is very important to use the same types of questions. We have another survey called the BRFSS, which is like your Vigital survey, so a telephone survey. And this survey used the same question, asking, do you do any sports or physical activities such as jogging, gardening or golf, walking for exercise. So it uses the same question. And the people who said no were tracked systematically over time. And you see that here, in contrast to the previous slide, what you see is perhaps something that goes down a little bit over time. So my point today is simply that you all are doing fantastic work in physical activity promotion. I would urge you to consider evaluating in a consistent way the levels of physical activity in your country, in your state, maybe in your local community to see how well your programs work. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Aimee, for the inspiring presentation.